morning. Good morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Today we are celebrating the ascension, which is Jesus' return to heaven 40 days after the resurrection. And next Sunday will be Pentecost, the celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to empower our lives for service and proclamation in Jesus' name. So next Sunday, wear red and we'll try to have some fun. And it's so good to be back together. We're a small gathering today, but we have many watching online later on today. Thank you. And may God bless our time together with God's presence and peace. The only announcement that I wanna share is that at the end of our service today, we will be watching the baptism of Lennox Gray, which occurred yesterday. And that is Nathan and Samantha Bull's daughter. She was born on May 8th, and she has two big sisters that you'll see in the video as well, Baylor and Reagan. So thank you for remembering them in your prayers as she begins her life in Christ. The Valley City School meal pickup will continue this summer. That's wonderful that that can continue with a breakfast and lunch option, and that starts already on Tuesday, May 26th. Thank you for noticing the people in the prayer list and of the other announcements. I invite you to rise as you're able and we'll join together in the call to worship. The living God is with us. And with all creation. Let us awaken our hearts to the presence of God, saying, We praise you for your glory. God before us, behind us, above us, upholding us. We praise you for your glory. God with us, among us, beside us, befriending us. We praise you for your glory. God within us, flowing through us, animating, harmonizing. We praise you for your glory. Amen. We'll join together in softly singing, Come Thou Almighty King, on the screens. Are 
can't take my mask off. Otherwise, my glasses fall down. <laughs> the sponsored reading is from Psalm 47. Clasp your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. A great king over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us. And the nations under our feet. Who chooses our inheritance for us. The bride of Jacob, who God loves. God has gone up with the shout. The Lord the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with the song. God reigns over the nations. God is enthroned on high. We continue with the reading from Acts promise of the Holy Spirit and the Ascension. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day walk away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as Jesus' brothers. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. I know we have some kids watching today. We'll get our camera man. I'm going to come down here a little bit. I'm going to show you a picture, and then we're going to talk about um, a little project that you can do today. So today we're celebrating the ascension of our Lord. Does anyone know what that word means? To ascend? What about people that are here, the grown-ups? What does it mean to ascend? To rise, yeah, to rise, to go up. So do you see in this picture, Jesus took his disciples up to the Mount of Olives and he talked to them and told them that the Spirit would come to help them and that he would be with them always. And then away he goes. And they stand watching for a long time. It would be really strange to see someone disappear into the sky, wouldn't it? Jesus tells them that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit so they can tell others about Jesus. I was thinking about things that ascend and I'm thinking a little bit about bubbles, and I'll show you how to make your own recipe of bubbles. But how can I make, this is called bubble solution, but it's not making any bubbles. What do I have to do to make bubbles? It's just dripping. <laughs> I have to blow, don't I? That's right. I have to blow air. Oh, and it does, it works with the air. Then the bubbles are alive, and they're moving. 
They go up for a little bit and then they come down. It's fun to chase bubbles, isn't it? I hope that you have some bubbles at home. And if you don't have any, you can make your own. Here's a recipe that you can make your own bubbles. And I'll let you look at it for a moment. And then we'll kind of just talk through it. So just like you need to breathe into the solution to make bubbles, God breathes into us. God breathes into us life and joy. So in this recipe, you need some warm water. So if you're gonna warm it up in the microwave, don't put plastic in the microwave, use a glass cup. And it says to use two cups. And so this is a two cup measuring cup. So warm up the water for about a minute in the microwave and then you can add some sugar to it. It says to measure one fourth cup of sugar for your bubbles and dissolve that sugar, stir it up really well with a spoon or a whisk, and then you're gonna wanna add some soap, some dish soap. That's a fourth a cup also. Stir that up really well. And then it'll last better, it'll work better if you let it sit for a couple hours or even overnight, and then the bubbles will be really fabulous. So maybe make some bubbles today or this week, and remember that God blows into us too, that we can be filled with love, and joy and we can spread love and kindness just like those bubbles can float all over then our love and kindness can go all over too with God's breath God's life in us let's say a prayer together dear Jesus you give us life you give us joy you give us the Holy Spirit thank you amen Beloved, uh, my heart and God's heart, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We who live in the prairie know about the sky, don't we? The sky is like our ocean. It goes on forever and sometimes taking a moment to look up at the sky brings a sense of calm and peace and a rush day. There's a beauty and a vastness in the prairie sky. Sometimes those of us who have lived here a long time forget its power and its beauty. I remember my brother-in-law coming to visit us when Caleb was a baby, and we lived in a parsonage in the Pancake Flat uh, Red River Valley, 10 miles west of Grafton. And you could see literally for miles from our driveway. Ken had always lived in Wisconsin among the trees. The night they came, he didn't go into the house for quite a while. The sky was so colorful and vibrant. He kept exclaiming, look at the sky, look at the sky. It goes on forever. Have you seen this? Are you watching? <laughs> I've never seen a sunset like that, he exclaimed. And I think he took at least 30 pictures. I laughed and delighted in his excitement. And now I thought perhaps he understood part of the reason that we lived in the North Dakota Prairie, the land's tug as well as the people's tug on our hearts. We are living in such an uncertain time. The world has changed so much in a short time. The end of the school year was sad. It just tapered off with no fun field days or class wars, no big goodbyes. Teachers have tried so hard to make connections with students over Zoom and email and even phone calls to ask if they need help. It's a strange time, isn't it? As Reverend Otis Moss III said recently, we are living in the hallway of not yet, in the closet of maybe not ever. As trips that we had planned are canceled, many ways of doing things are different, and for some, death, terrible illness, loss of employment, and we are missing the gathered church. It's good to gather today, 
but some are nervous about coming and feel banished from one of their favorite places for fear of the virus. As we start back in person because of the extremely low infection rate in our county, it's very different. We are completely spread out. There's not very many of us here to, together. Everyone is wearing masks, which is important and necessary as we can be asymptomatic and not know we're carrying the virus. But I can't tell if you're yawning or if you're smiling. Okay, the laughter, that's as good. So you're not asleep out there, okay? But there are no children dancing around today. We can't sing as loudly, but we are worshiping. We're together. Jesus is here, whether you're at home or here in this place, we are worshiping. God is with us. We are calling out to God and trusting that he is near and he will help us. In the ascension of Jesus, the world is changing for the disciples too. Jesus will no longer be with them in the flesh. No more breakfasts of fresh fish on the beach. No more dramatic healings. No more religious leaders trying to trap Jesus. And then he turns it all around. That's what they think anyway at that moment. There will be God's friends gathered to eat and share everything together. There will be dramatic healings. There will be confrontations with the religious leaders. It's 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. He has promised them the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come to them, Jesus promises. But he must leave for the good news to spread. They will be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. And then on the Mount of Olives, that special place where Jesus had often gone to pray, and where he was arrested, where Judas betrayed him. And in that same place, Jesus is taken up to heaven. And the disciples, they can't stop looking up at the sky. And they are frozen in time for a moment. And the angels have to say, why? Why are you standing there looking up toward heaven? The ascension is a new beginning. It's not abandonment. Sometimes... We do live in fear and forget that Jesus is as close as our breath because of the ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit. When I was a child, I loved to lay on the grass and look up at the sky. My brother and I would play games about who could spot what, and he would always find dinosaurs, <laughs> spaceships in the clouds. And I remember thinking, what will heaven be like, looking up at the clouds and our prairie sky? Preacher Alvin Rodness writes that it will be simply like turning the page, leaving this life and entering the next. Our story continues there, and it will be exciting. But this world is good, too. Most of us do not want to leave it. In spite of all its troubles, it's home for the moment. And it is God's world too. And God has given us work to do here, people to love, things to make better. And it would be a pity though, if we thought this world were good enough, if this was all there was. So while God does not want us to resign from our responsibilities and joys of living in this life, deep down we long for another place in God's kingdom, where life will be as God wants it for all his sons and daughters. A place without hunger and strife. A place without war and violence. He has promised there is such a place waiting for us. We count on that promise without having a preview. We trust in Jesus. God has promised that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so we too who trust in him will be raised to new life. And while you wait for that day, trust in the Lord and do good. Spend your energy on things that matter, that bring life, that bring peace, that give joy, bless others with Christ's love. 
Everything seems to take more energy right now. I think that's because of all the questions and the unknowns that this pandemic has brought upon us. So in those times that you feel overwhelmed or hopeless, breathe deeply. Remember, God is with you. And God desires to fuel you, to fill you up with his presence and peace. God is your companion and desires to draw you close. The Holy Spirit keeps you close to Jesus to encourage you and help you be a sign of God's love for others. The Spirit tells us again and again, do not let your hearts be troubled. Your present and your future are with God. Your life has meaning and purpose. As Professor John Whitlett writes, the ascension of Jesus gives us language to speak about both Jesus' absence and presence. His absence from us in the body and his presence with us through the Holy Spirit. Being honest about Jesus' absence is the first step to being open to God's empowering presence with us through the Holy Spirit. The absence of Jesus depicts the boundary between heaven and earth as permeable. Our prayers cross through that boundary. Jesus' resurrected body passes through that boundary, and one day ours will too. The ascension of Jesus changes how we visualize heaven. It pictures heaven as a place where resurrected bodies live. Heaven is not just erythral and ghostly vaporous. Jesus retains his humanity in heaven. And so that means we have human dust seated on the throne of God. Someone who understands what it means to be human with our suffering and our joy. In Christ, humanity and divinity are joined. Jesus is the intersection of those two worlds. He has brought them together outside of time and space. So the God who understands you and your human experience sits on the throne. Jesus actively prays for you. Jesus actively participates in your life and is waiting for you to join him in the place that he is preparing for you. Let us pray. God of ascension, you open your hands in blessing and promise us your very self. May we be a blessing to others as we share your abiding love with the world. Amen. Thanks be to God. In a moment, we'll continue with Jesus shall reign. I know it's kind of tricky to sing very softly, but... If that's how we can still have music, it was very much worth it. Thank you. 
you are able, I invite you to stand as we share together in this creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life and death, life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let's take a good breath and know God is here. God is with us as we boldly stand in the presence of God who offers us peace for the world and those whom we love. Breath of life, breath of peace, breath of all that is new for the air that fills our lungs a million times a day without us ever thinking about it. We breathe in deep gratitude to you. When our hearts race with worry and our breath grows short, may we return again to your peace. When we race, struggling to catch our breath, slow us back down into your deep breath. When we grow weary, inspire us again. With wind and fire, call us back to you that we are made in your image. We pray for our congregation's ministries, strengthen them, bless us as we reach others through the giving of our love, our time, and our income. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the transitions and leave takings of our lives, Lord, joyful or sorrowful, planned or unexpected, welcomed or resisted, there is a space for the Holy Spirit to come, an invitation. Help us to navigate the changes in our own lives. Keep our eyes open for the blessings they may hold. Sustain us in the life we share in your Son, that we may be blessed with your grace and love to be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Giver of life, bless baby Lennox and her parents. Thank you for claiming us as your own in baptism. Help all parents and children to grow in love and peace, knowing your help and your guidance. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for warring nations, political refugees, children caught in violence. Break into fear and hatred with your love. God of peace, help us to hear your call. Send your people to shelter, feed, and visit those in need. We pray for those known to us who are in need of your peace and your life. We remember those who have faithfully served our nation, some giving their life, others coming home with scars, physical, spiritual, mental. Bless them and their families with your peace and your hope. We pray for Samantha Ranaset today, as she will be leaving on Tuesday to start basic training. Guide her, bless her, protect her. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for unity of those who gather in your name, in our community, in homes, and throughout the world. We lift up to your care and provision our missionaries who continue to serve in Cameroon and for all who share your love and healing in their daily lives, in family relationships, in work, and in the ordinary tasks of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We entrust our prayers to you, loving God. We receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and because of Jesus, our Messiah, our Lord. Amen. God's peace be with you. Thank you. Don't you just share the sign of peace with those right by you that live with you or wave to those that don't live with you? God's peace. your gifts online and in the play here today, let us join together in the offertory prayer. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We live in the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of Jesus, our Savior, who is enthroned forever at your right hand, interceding for us as the great high priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all its creatures, angels and archangels, we praise your name and join her on in the After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and offered it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, help us to remember, to remember that you are with us, that you live in us. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. All are welcome. If you are communing at home together, make sure you say the words of institution for one another so you're not doing this live with us. And then you can share together whatever bread um, and juice or wine that you have at home, remembering Christ's presence and Christ's forgiveness and peace. So we'll just have one station today. And um, the ushers will help you know when to come up. And I hope that you won't feel rushed. Um, the people serving will wear masks. So you can take your mask off when you come up, either when you come up or right before you receive communion. And if you want to pause, you know, at the altar rail without using the altar rail, but if you want to pause at the communion rail, there's not very many of us. So please have your moment with the Lord. And, the worshiping community.
sing, he's got the whole world in our hands, or just kind of listen to that and hear the promise of that, that God 
God does have our world and our lives in his hands. And then we're doing pretty good on time. So if you feel comfortable staying to watch the baptism service, that'd be wonderful. And if you are feeling like you need different air, or you know, we'll understand too. But we will show Lennox's baptism. And that is a 12 minute thing, I think, um, following our song today. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. I present the next great bullet for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your daughter baptized into Christ? We do. As you bring Lennox to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God and the Lord's Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God. Proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Lennox grow in the Christian faith and life? We do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Lennox Gray in the Christian faith as you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. We do. People of God gathered here today, do you promise to support Lennox and pray for her and her new life in Christ? We do. we do. As we say yes to God and walking in God's ways, we turn from those things that distance and distract us from God. So as we profess our faith in Christ, we will state those things that we walk away from or renounce in our walk with God. Do you renounce the devil and the forces that defy God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin, and death and raise us up to live in you pour out your holy spirit the power of your living word that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life to you be given honor and praise through jesus christ our lord in the unity of the holy spirit now and forever amen Lennox Gray, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, you belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. I pray for you. We give you thanks, O God. That through water and the word, your Holy Spirit, you give new life to your children. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Lord Jesus, strengthen Lennox Gray with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Special cross. Remember, this is like the tattoo that only Jesus sees. Right? It's the sign of the cross. And then you can remind her too. You can give her the sign of the cross and re help her remember her baptism. <laughs> Lennox Gray, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Let us welcome Lennox. We welcome you into the body of Christ and to the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. church too. They'll be so happy to see your video and pray for you and meet you at church and after a little while. <laughs> Don't you love the little noises she makes? Mm -hmm. Sweetie. Should we show her off real quick so we get a nice close-up of her? 